The topic of this video is determining the present or future value of a lump sum of money. Let's look at a problem. If Tanisha has $1,000 to invest at 5% per annum compounded quarterly, how long will it be before she has $1,550? If the compounding is continuous, how long will it be? So we recognize that this is really two problems in one, and for that reason I'm going to split this video into two parts. I'm temporarily going to erase the last sentence. We'll deal with that when we get to our second video. Notice that the difference between the two sentences is compounded quarterly versus compounded continuously, and there's a different formula for each one. Okay, so let's get rid of this last sentence just for a moment and solve this first state stated problem. So we recognize that when we have a financial models type problem, the first thing we need to figure out is how is the account being compounded? Because that will determine the formula that we start with. If it is being compounded continuously, we use the PERT formula, F equals PE to the RT. But if it is not being compounded continuously, for example, in this problem, it's being compounded quarterly, then we use the following formula, F equals P, parenthesis, 1 plus the fraction R over N, closed parenthesis, to the N times T power. We have to identify the value of all of these variables, F, P, R, N, T. So let's read the problem and see if we can figure out the meaning of each one. Tanisha has $1,000 to invest. That's the amount of money she has now in the present. That's the principal at 5% per annum. That is the interest rate, R. And even though R is described as a percent in the problem, it has to be converted to a decimal in order to be put in the formula. Like pi and E, percent is a symbol that always represents the same number. The percent symbol is the decimal 0 0.01. And since the 5 and the percent are side by side, which represents multiplication, we multiply 5 times 0 0.01 which gives us 0 0.05. Next, we continue reading. Compounded quarterly. This tells me that since there are four quarters in a year, the account will receive money four times in a year, which tells me the value of N. N, the number of times in a year that the account receives money is four. How long will it be? That tells me that T, the time, is the unknown in this problem. And then finishing the sentence, before she has $1,550. That's F, the amount of money that she will have in the future. Okay, great. So now that we have the value of each of our variables, we can plug into our formula. F is 1550. P is 1000. 1 plus R is 0 0.05. N is 4, close parentheses, raised to the N times T, which is 4 times and we'll leave the t as t since that's the variable that we're going to be solving for. All right, so this is the moment where we're gonna get out our calculators and we're gonna do a little bit of calculator math here. Following order of operations, we need to work inside of our grouping symbol first and division happens before addition. So we're gonna take 0 0.05 and divide it by four. That gives us 0 0.0125 then we'll add one. So this gives us 1.0125. And of course, all of that is still being raised to the 4t power. Notice that I make my t with a little hook at the end here so that it does not look like a mathematical plus sign. All right, great. So our previous advice regarding logarithms is going to be helpful at this moment. Variable up in the exponent, use the converter. Well, our variable t is up in the exponent, so to solve for it, we're going to need to use our converter. The word log does not appear in our equation, so it must be on the exponent side, which means we need our equation to have just three things, a base, an exponent, and an argument, nothing more and nothing less. In our problem, we have a base, an exponent, an argument, and this extra piece here. The 1,000 is in our way, and we need it to go away. Since the 1,000 is multiplying by the exponential, the way we will get rid of that is with division. So we're going to divide the left side by 1,000, and we're going to divide the right side by 1,000. On the right side, the 1,000s cancel to the number 1, and because anything times 1 is itself, and anything divided by 1 is itself, the right side of our equation is simply 1.0125 to the 4t power. 
and the left side is 1550 divided by 1000, which is 1.55. Okay, now we have the three objects we were hoping for, a base, an exponent, and an argument. And by putting them in our converter, we're able to find what 4t is equal to. Observe, base is 1.0125, exponent is 4t, argument is 1.55. Matching up the colors and shapes on the other side, we'll have log base 1.0125 of 1.55 equals 4t. Using our converter has allowed us to get the t on the ground so that we can more easily solve for it. So we now have the statement 4t equals log base 1.0125 of 1.55. Notice where these items are being written. The 4t, the word log, and 1.55 are all on the line. The 1.0125 is below the line. And now seems like a good time to remind you that every log has a brick. Because as we now turn our attention to solving for t, we're going to divide by 4 on both sides. And when we do, we recall that nothing outside the brick can affect anything inside the brick, except when you're using rule 9 and you're coming through this little gap, which we are not doing right now. So our exact answer to this problem is that t is equal to log base 1.0125 of 1.55, all divided by 4. Now this is the exact answer, but I want you to imagine a situation. Pretend for a moment that you're Tanisha. You go into the bank with your $1,000, you choose an account, and you ask the person, how long will I have to wait until my $1,000 turns into $1,550? And they look right at you and they say, you just have to wait log base 1.0125 of 1.55 all divided by four years. You would probably be very frustrated with that answer. It is not a very practical answer. So now is the time where we need to adjust this so that we can get a decimal approximation. This is its own skill in and of itself. The first thing you might recognize is that many calculators do not have the ability to let you choose the log base. And therefore, the only way you can get a decimal approximation is if you were to use the change of base formula on this log with base of 1.0125. So let's start with that. We know that log base 1.0125 of 1.55 can be rewritten using the change of base formula. The change of base formula says you'll have a log up top and a log down below. You get to choose the base of the log that you want to use. I choose base 10, and then the up goes up and the down goes down. So the 1.55 will go there, and the 1.0125 will go there. This right here is equivalent to the numerator part of our answer. So if we can calculate what this is equal to and then divide it by 4, we will get a decimal answer, something that is relatable in a real-world sense. Okay, let's proceed. So log base 10 is just the log button. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take log and then 1.55, close parentheses, enter. The next thing I'm going to do is to divide by log 1.55. 0.0125, close parentheses, enter. That's this box. Now I'll divide that result by 4. Divide by 4, enter. And I get the value 8.82. It will take approximately 8.82 years for Tanisha to turn her $1,000 into $1,550 by investing it with this particular account where it's compounded quarterly at 5% per annum.